Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. We thank God for another day. Uh, I'm here today to study the Word of God with whomever is willing to listen. Uh, I'm studying Him for myself, for my own uh, benefit, but I'm sharing what I'm studying with whoever would listen and whoever desires to know God more intimately and to put effort toward that uh, goal. My goal is to be like Christ. So I study Him. I study the Word of the Father. And I pray that God will lead me to be more like Him. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning thankful once again that you awaken us and you provide for us and you protect us, love us, care for us, direct us, comfort us, give us joy and peace in your power and in your glory. We have victory over this world, and we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to study your word and to know you more intimately so that we might follow you and not sin against you. I pray for sanctification, Lord. I want to be sanctified and separated unto you and your work acceptable through the blood of your son Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I pray this lesson encourages someone to seek you and to know you more intimately. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning's daily devotional is titled Disciplined Children Bring Honor. Well, that's a word for me for sure because I got five opportunities to feed into the lives of God's children so that they may bring honor unto me and God, most importantly. Okay. The word is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verses 15 through 18. Proverbs 29, 15 says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression is increased but the righteous shall see their fall correct thy son and he shall give thee rest yea he shall give delight unto thy soul where there is no vision 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 when there is no, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Amen. You must raise a child in the way that he should go. So that when, he's, when he is old, he will not depart far from it. I am in this word today because of my mother and the prayers of my mother and the way she raised me to love and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Today's lection or today's lesson um, is uh, section two, children and parents. Section 2 is titled Children and Parents. 
And 2A is titled Honor and Obedience. From the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, uh, we're going to read verses 1, 2, 3. This is children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thy mayeth live long on the earth. The commentary says, the word obey, in the Greek, it's bokau, has it in its background the idea of listening or attending to, hence obeying. It is a picture of a person submitting to the voice of authority. The phrase in the Lord defines the spear of obedience and makes possible exception for children whose parents are not Christians and who sometimes are given commands that are in direct contradiction to God's word. Paul gives the reason why children are to obey their parents. It is right and therefore it pleases the Lord. It is a sign of the last days when children no longer do this. That's from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Not only are children to obey their parents, they are also to honor them. This means a great deal more than mere obedience. A dog or other beast may obey its master, but it does not have the emotional or spiritual capability of rendering honor. To honor means to show reverential respect. Honoring transcends obeying and implies mental and perhaps emotional willingness to do so. This was one of the Ten Commandments. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's from Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16. The promise concerned the Jews in their homeland. By keeping this commandment, they were assured a long life in the land. However, Paul, in writing to the Greeks in Ephesus, seemed to extend the promise here to include a person's lifespan. A longer life is a reward for parental honor and obedience. You know, the relationship between a parent and their children should be one of reverence. The child should be in reverence of the parent who on a small scale is like God. They provide all that that child needs, just like God provides all that we need. It's an example for the child to see the love of a parent providing and caring for and comforting and educating and bringing wisdom into a child's life 
explaining all that uh, is in the world to them so they're not confused. Training a child up should give that child the desire to be respectful to the parent, to honor that parent for their efforts, for the love that they display the kid. And normally, that's the result. But there is sin in the world, and sometimes children are distracted, and um, they are possessed or the focused on other um, things that become um, more important to them than the parents. Those things are normally sin things that the parent is telling them not to engage in or believe in. And so, when you stand for God, Sometimes uh, a child will go against a parent because they want the thing of the world that the parent is telling them is not good. So parents should be long-suffering and patient, but also they should be stern in the word to teach that child what is right and what is godly. I'm going to stop here for today. Uh, I thank you for your time. I pray that something that I said this morning encourages you to seek a more intimate relationship with the Father. Have a blessed day.